Yo, what is good, Rant Team? I'm RJ West, and I am back for another edition of the Where Should They Go From Here series. And uh, we're taking a look at where the 76ers should go from here. And uh, we saw some good things, we saw some good things, and we also saw some bad things. So, Joel and B play on, on a minutes restriction. To start off his career, Ben Simmons was injured, and uh, we'll just take a look at this. I wonder if they keep track of the moves made, because the Sixers were definitely busy. I don't think they do. But we have some guys that we're going to be talking over, so let's pull up the stats real quick for the Sixers. And so there's obviously Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid got a big-time attribute attribute boost by 2k he went up to an 86 overall and this is a guy he's their cornerstone of the franchise he's gonna need to he's gonna need to not he's gonna need to stay on the court that's just the big thing he's gonna need to stay on the court he's gonna need to not be injured and that's the thing for everybody everybody needs to stay healthy but Joel Embiid a, he looks better with the new haircut that he has, but B, <laughs> he is a guy, he's the process, he's the process, saying trust the process in Philadelphia, and he's a guy that can do it all, I mean, he can be a good post-up center, his, defen his defensive abil ability is very good, and he's basically Joel Embiid, the dream, he's just basically the dream. But he's a dream center for today's NBA because he can shoot. He can shoot threes. He can shoot from the mid range. He's a good post up guy. He his handling. I'm I'm not sure if I really would like that. But you don't need him to handle the basketball since he's a big man. But he also can rebound. He can rebound, and he's very efficient too. He's very efficient, and he just knows he knows how to put points on the board. He knows how to rebound defend he's just the dream center for today's NBA because with all of his abilities that she would want a center to have he can also shoot he can also shoot so there's that too then we have Dario Saric a guy who could potentially be rookie of the year I mean Malcolm Brogdon so in in here it was actually I'm not sure who it was I don't remember who it was here but I don't know where is it So yeah, Russell Westbrook got MVP. <laughs> like, yeah, so Dario Saric ended up winning Rookie of the Year for in, in this thing. I, obviously, we don't know if that's going to happen in real life, but Dario Saric is a guy, he's got some promise. He's He can be a good shooter, a guy who can space the floor for the 76ers, a guy who can space the floor, be a good power forward that can shoot, and also even... I mean, he won't need to create his own shot because he's going to have Ben Simmons finding him open, but he wasn't all too efficient, and from some games that I saw, like, he was trying to create his own shot a little bit, unsuccessful. He was successful at times, but unsuccess unsuccessful in other times. I don't know, that's just what I saw. But then there's also Jaleel Okafor. Jaleel Okafor is younger than Joel Embiid, but... For today's modern big man, I mean, he can fit as a guy coming off the bench for Philadelphia, but as a former third overall draft pick, I'm not sure if that's really what they want. All right, I'm not sure if that's really what they want, and I mean, it's just something that I'm really uncertain about. I'm uncertain about Jaleel Okafor because he can post up, but defensively, he's not very good. Rebound wise, he's all right. He only had 4.8 rebounds a game this year. He only played 50 games, like he was injured. But in his rookie season, he put up 17 points per game, which was promising. But he'd be a good bench player to have if you're the 76ers because he can score it in the post. But you're going to need to get some guards. You're going to need to get some guards. You're going to need to get some guys that can fit around Ben Simmons. Some guys, if you're going to. If you're gonna develop Ben Simmons into your face of the franchise, you know, besides Joel Embiid, then you're going to need to get somebody to be that shooter. So Ben Simmons is gonna be that ball dominant guy that will carry the rock for you, 
Joel Embiid will be the guy that will be posting up and your third your third piece is going to need to be the guy that can that can shoot you're gonna need to be you're gonna have to have the guy that will be the shooter option <sighs> or, I mean there's Dario Saric there but he's really a role player he'd be a good guy to start at the power forward position and uh, actually let's take a look at his defense abilities what 2k racing 2k isn't always right to put their ratings but I just want to see where they put him defensively eh, not very good nah, mm, nah, not too good not too bad either but you're gonna need to get some shooters and you have a yield an opportunity to get that in the draft you're also gonna need a point guard so <laughs> I, mean, I mean there's that as well but we'll take a look at the mock draft this is if the Lakers pick drops out of the top three. If they do, if that if that happens and they get a top three pick with their own pick, then that would be excellent. That would be excellent. And uh, they have the Mavericks pick, I believe. I'm I'm not sure if it has a protection on it. Okay, it's lottery protection. Okay, then they don't have it. I'm not sure why. They, why would they trade? Hmm. I don't know. They they basically got nothing out of that New Orleans Noel trade. Basi it was basically nothing. So, they could potentially have two pitch, pit, uh, picks. Picks. They're not going to have three because this is, this is already a lottery pick. But, in terms of their cap space, their cap space is outstanding. But they don't need to go out and sign free agents. So, Tiago Splitter is a guy that they're probably going to let walk. Same with Sergio Rodri. I mean, maybe they'll resign Sergio Rodriguez. But, the rest of these guys have team options. So, they're probably going to bring him back. Except for maybe, I mean, they might bring back Joe Henderson because he can provide some good shooting for them. But the 76ers are going to need to draft. They could draft a guy like, they're going to need to draft a guy like Malik Monk. I feel like they can get a guy like Malik Monk. He'll be a good shooter for them. And I feel like he can be a good defender. But if they also, if they can fall into the top three, into the top three of draft picks. Like, if they can somehow luck into Alonzo Ball, he can be a good shooter for them. He can be a good shooter for them. And... I mean, he can play... He's shown capabilities of being able to play off ball. He mainly has the ball in his hands because he's a playmaker. So I'm not sure how he will fit with Ben Simmons entirely since you really want him to be a playmaker instead of just a shooter. Because you don't want him, I mean, obviously taking the pressure off of Ben Simmons can help by having Lonzo Ball being the ball handler, but really Ben Simmons is a guy that you want carrying the rock. So, I'm not sure what they should do in terms of point guards. I don't know much about Frank Talikina. I don't know much about him, just I don't. Seems to be a playmaker, seems to be a ball dominant point guard by these ratings. Yeah, Aaron Foss, I know that he's athletic, but he can't really shoot, so he wouldn't really help Ben Simmons in that regard. So Malik Monk would be the guy that can help them. But a guy that I feel the 76ers should go after, I'm not sure if he will want to come to Philadelphia or go to Philadelphia from my perspective. But a guy that they should look to get, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. He can play off the ball. He doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective 100% of the time. Or 90% of the time, I should say. Well, I mean, he doesn't. He just doesn't need. He doesn't completely need the ball in his hands to be effective, is my point. He'll be a good guy that can be a solid playmaker if they need to resort to somebody else. His defense is pretty solid in its own right. Alright, he's not that bad. He's a pretty solid defender. And he can play off of Ben Simmons. So if they draft, if they draft Malik Monk, and they sign Drew Holiday back to Philadelphia, this team—I mean, the only thing, the only problem is Drew Holiday. I'm not sure if he wants to come back a because of the messy situation, and also because they traded him. I'm not sure if he's going to care about the fact that they traded him away. But I just. Drew Holiday is a guy that they should get. Like, if they get Drew Holiday, 
if they sign Drew Holiday and draft Malik Monk, that could be something that can be a good vital focus point for the 76ers team moving forward. Getting Drew Holiday, I'm not sure if he's going to want to leave New Orleans necessarily because there's Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins, but I mean, if he does, going to Philadelphia can help as long as they draft Malik Monk, and then if they get the Lakers pick, I'm not sure what they can do if they still have a pick inside the top three. If they have two picks inside the top three, or I mean two picks inside the top five at the very least, then... I'm not sure what they would do with their second pick. One of their picks, they're gonna they're gonna have to select Malik Monk. Their next pick, I'm not sure what they're gonna do. Maybe stockpile assets, maybe draft Josh Jackson. But uh, hey, you never know what will happen. They traded Nerlens Noel for basically nothing, so there's still a lot of things. There's still a lot of ways that the 76ers can go about this. But the best move is just continue to stockpile assets. And then if you have to eventually trade trade them away for a star. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this edition of where the Philadelphia 76ers should go. Next team we will be looking at will be the Orlando Magic. And so that is going to do it for this. I have been RJ West, and I am saying so long.